this down for us. So whether that's in terms of our clients and how we deliver, 
but also the talent that we have on board. He's very keen to make sure that it's more diverse because he genuinely understands the value of diversity. Um, I recently saw an email between, on an email trail, I always look down the end of the email trail to see what else is going on. And I noticed that there was a communication between him and, he, and the head of HR. And they were talking about diversity, diversity and he was just saying, like, how can we make this happen? So it was really refreshing to see that a leader, someone a CEO in the organisation, is really genuinely committed <coughs> to diversity and is going to embrace it and challenge us to be more diverse in how we do. So in this time, we, in the last six months, we've actually done a lot of work, as I said, the CEO is actually pushing a lot on the diversity agenda. We've created a new diversity and inclusion strategy, um, which was signed off last year, and it's based on, four, on five key pillars. So the first of that is forming best practice, which is really about thought leadership and learning. We have serving as diversity ambassadors to our community, which is about sharing and showcasing our work. So when we talk about our community, it's really our corporates, our clients, our banks, it might be banks with B2B, so it would be our banks, our fintechs that we work with. So about serving as a diverse ambassador. Understanding our data. So we haven't collected as much data on diversity as we should have. And so that's been a, been a key pillar for us, making sure that not only are we understanding the data, but we're also collecting the right data as well to inform our decisions, but also to make sure that we can assess against our metrics, make sure that we can see development and we can measure it over a period of time. Um, supporting external charities, so we do a lot of work, with, what, we've, what we found has been really helpful is the work that we do with affinity organisations. So we work with um, organisations like Diversicom, uh, Leonard Cheshire, just to make sure that we are aligning ourselves with those organisations that know the groups best and can help us to reach those groups as well. And then diversity in practice, so in the short period of time we've had a new CEO, we've actually increased Although slightly, he's increased the, um, the gender balance on the Exco already, and we recently got a very senior chief role that he's presented to me, and he's <laughs> he's very keen on making sure that there's a diversity of thought as well. So it's not just about gender or background or fame. It's about making sure that where they've come from, they're not necessarily coming from a resident university, or they're not necessarily coming in like a particular uh, they like a polo, or they it's, it's a different type of dynamic. So he's actually pushing us as a recruitment team to make sure that we get something different and that we have a different pool of candidates that he can select from. So as well as the leadership um, challenge, we've got different things that we deliver organisationally. So when I spoke to Natasha at first, I said, well, we don't really do too much. We've got aspirations, we want to do things, but in terms of what we're actually delivering now, I'm not sure there's that much that I can speak of. But when I started jotting it down and looked at all the things that we're doing, actually a lot of the, I was surprised actually by how much we do in the organisation. Um, some of the things, this is a range of the different activities we do. And again, some of them are very small, but actually they've made a big impact and you can see how it's changing the culture and the mindset in the organisation. Um, some of the things I wanted to touch on here were around um, the recruitment. So. We put in place compulsory training for all of our hiring managers, and that's a combination of interview training and also unconscious bias training. And although the idea of having compulsory training might, to me, sound a bit off, because it sounded like it was being forced, what we found is that it does create a conversation. So it increases the dialogue between hiring managers, what is acceptable, what isn't acceptable, but also why it's not acceptable. And I was always surprised by kind of feedback. I, I like to sit in on them because I'm surprised by what people say. Why is it not appropriate to ask someone their age? And that's genuinely what people will come back with during that interview training. So it's been great to be a, some of our recruiters deliver it and facilitate it as well. So it's a really good opportunity to be able to delve into the specific issues and to share best practice, but also to explain the depth, like why is it an issue? Why, how could it be perceived and why does it make a difference? Um, another thing that we found really, we're starting to do much more is around broadening our reach. So broadening our talent pool, working with affinity organisations. So here I've spoken about the networks and volunteering. So we work with organisations like the Brokerage, 
think of the pools, Diversicom and Lemon Cheshire. Diversicom, all of those are UK based, but Diversicom is actually based in Belgium, which is where we're headquartered. And it's just an opportunity to expose our hiring managers and our teams to different types of people. So for example, the brokerage, they're a social mobility charity based in, I think they're based in London. And we work, they work on create, identifying top mid-level mid performers in schools that are from backgrounds that are considered challenging. And so we work with them to do interview training, which has been really fantastic for our team. It was really inspiring. They had a really good exposure to young people and different types of young people, but also how eloquent they could be or how smart they were and how technical they were, their minds. Um, we also used the brokerage, we invited some students from the brokerage to our conference. We have an annual conference in Cyber. It attracts about uh, eight, I think 11,000 people a year. And so last year we encouraged some of their students to just expose them to the industry as well, so that we are starting to nurture the new pipeline of talent. So people understand that it's not just about a certain type of people that join financial services or office, but actually, even if you're different, like this is what we're exposed to, just to get their mindset thinking about the opportunities that are available to them. Um, we also looked at diverse candidates, candidate pools. So reaching out to a range of different candidates is, saying that you're gonna select a diverse range of candidates is fine if you've got a diverse pool of candidates. And to have one or two diverse candidates in a selection list is fine. But actually, I read recently that if you have two diverse candidates on the shortlist, it actually improves significantly the number of hires that you get from a diverse background. So for women, if you have two women in the shortlist, it increases your hire, diversity hire rate by 79 times. If you've got two people of color, it increases it by 200 times. So it's not just about having individuals, it's just about making sure that there's a real range of diversity in those those short lists. Another thing we did around recruitment specifically is around interview structure. So it sounds like a very basic thing to do, but having a structure, which we didn't have six, no, we didn't have about 12 months ago, having a structure really helps us challenge our hiring managers. So we work on three agile <coughs> values. We have three values in the organization. They are customer orientation, one accountable team, and open-minded and curious. So they span whatever your background, they would still apply. And so we use them as one of the key, key, three of the key criteria. And then we also ask them for three technical skills that we also want to apply to a job description. So those are the six skills and values that we're looking for. So we set that up from the very beginning so that when we go through the interview process and when we go through the selection process, we can challenge, really challenge the managers why would you say that this person is the right candidate? Because if you go back to what the key criteria was to start off with, the fact that they do polo doesn't make them a better candidate. So for us, having a structure really helps us to challenge the hiring managers, and that has made an impact on how we recruit more diverse profiles. Um, another thing here, um, we have, in that we run a number of internal groups, and we do lots of events internally, as well as externally. So we have, as well as the young people that come in from the brokerage from different backgrounds, we also encourage people from the industry or from outside of the industry that have different backgrounds to also talk about um, different elements, learning events that will help them. So we've got Turbocharge Your Career, where we had a really successful Olympian coming into the organization to share what she was doing and how she had an impact on the exec board that she works on. Then we might have someone from a BAME background so that people can see, I believe in what I would say is proximity power. So I think the more our hiring managers are exposed to people that are different to them, the more likely they are to understand them and then also embrace them as part of the recruitment process. So we try and do that from a junior level, from looking at our pipeline, but also looking at um, the experts that are already in different industries and bringing them into the organization, just so people can get an understanding of how they operate how talented they are and the value that they can offer as well. So in terms of what we've done, um, what does it look like, the diversity inclusion of risk? So we have balance of risk, which is a, it's a voluntary group. So we have about 150 people on that group now. 
And they are ambassadors that work on diversity. So they push the agenda for diversity. They create groups that are support, almost like the, not support groups, but groups that are challenged to push on different parts of the agenda, the diversity agenda. Um, we've got a quote there from our head of HR, just about the fact that she is pushing on diversity. She's very vocal about ensuring that we have a diverse um, pool of employees. She's been employed. She's in. She's been a head of HR for just two years, so she's been really pushing. Our CEO sends a lot of messages about diversity, and every time there's a conversation with him, he always pushes the diversity agenda because he genuinely believes it. But this really challenges some of the managers that we've got, and also we can go back to the leadership um, examples that are set. The Picture in, in, in the middle, that slide was up when we introduced some of the people to, from the Broke Pitch to our event. And then we ran a diversity hackathon. So globally, we had a hackathon where we got people together to generate ideas on how we can be more diverse. So it actually enabled all our staff to look at how we might create new ideas or how we might really push different elements of diversity. And then here we've been doing some work on employer branding. And so for me, <coughs> there's a visuals are very important and so it was really clear that we made sure that our employer branding exercise wasn't just global but it looked at different it showcased different types of people so for one of our external for example one of our external posts on our campaign was around one of our values is we give you the freedom to be yourself and so we focused on highlighting black inventors and black engineers in black american engineers to support what we were trying to say so we send out those messages about how much we value different of what's next we've got um, what we would like to start doing is encouraging more friendship so I said earlier we'd like to bring different types of people from a talent pipeline as well as experts and so we're going to be working more on apprenticeships and internships we've also got a focus on returner programs so looking at those that have been on parental leave whether they're male or female getting back into the workplace expanding our balance at SWIFT so this year we've started working on LGBTQ so making sure that we've got more people feel like they, they've got other people that they're in common with, so they don't just feel isolated, but that they can relate to other people in the organisation. Neurodiversity and cultural diversity, we've got our areas which I think we need to push a bit more on, so we're very good on the gender diversity, making sure that we've got senior executive leaders that are, we've got more gen, um, gender balance, but in terms of the neurodiversity and cultural diversity, we're, we're not as far down the line with, so it's really a challenge for me to ensure that we go into different groups. So we might go into different community groups. I'm pushing our recruiters and my recruitment team to start meetups to <coughs> open up how we attract candidates. So work with different charities and really get an understanding of those different groups and actually us going into those groups, networking and meeting different people so that we can enhance our own network and then work on the um, on improving the talent pipeline. I think in terms of number two, we've got belonging. So one quote I heard earlier today actually is that diversity is a fact, inclusion is a choice, but belonging is a feeling. And I think that, that kind of stands for what we're trying to do in terms of leadership development. So once we've got everybody in place, how are you going to maintain that workforce? There's no point us working really hard to be in a diverse pool if actually candidates individuals, once they're employed, are going to feel very isolated or that they have to conform to the culture of the organisation. So for us, informing the leadership and how they can create a sense of belonging for everybody is really important to us. For me, it's about breaking down organisational structures. So there's research that says that maybe introverted men or women are less likely to speak up or influence meetings. So how can our managers work to actually pull out that information? So, okay, Paul, you had a really good idea. Do you want to expand on that? Or, I don't know, you might want to encourage somebody else that had an idea to really present their idea or push them a little bit further, knowing that they're less likely to have that influence on the meeting. The other thing for me is around my own team. So I have a team of six, no, so seven individuals that work across Netherlands, Belgium, and the UK. We work from South Africa up to uh, Stockholm. So we've got quite a wide variety of candidates that we're placing each year. And so for me, it was really important to make sure we have 
directly for these genes. So there's an assumption that recruiters have to be social, they have to be extrovert, and actually I don't think that's the case. And so what I've done is to make sure that we have a very diverse team in terms of thought. So we've got very technical people, and I've been challenging Swift to say, okay, well, I'm not sure he's a recruiter profile because he's not very sociable. And actually, there's lots of skills that he can bring that others can't bring. And so for me, it was really about making sure that we've got a really diverse team so that we can represent everybody that we're recruiting. If I've got lots of people that all think the same and they all look the same, then they're not going to have that affinity with different types of people. So for me, that's a starting point, making sure that my team is diverse. I've had a good opportunity to start recruiting a lot of people into my team. I started with two people. So I've been able to recruit a lot of people into my team in the last year. And so that's really helped to ensure that we're a diverse team, but that we can role model that to other, other parts of the organisation. I think amongst our team of eight, we've got six different nationalities. And also, in terms of mindset, I've got somebody that's very task-oriented, and she didn't necessarily gel with the rest of the team initially, but just understanding, sharing that we're different and that she has different value, and actually we're all working towards the same values, that really helps to bring the team much, much closer together. So that's basically the end of my presentation.